Oh yeah. Um, during the semis, I fell. And at first I was like, this isn't me. I'm not on the floor right now. But then I settled in. I was like, dang, I'm on the floor. And I saw how like upset first it was hurting, but I saw how upset the other um, Nigel Amos was. I was like, you know what? Like we did the best we could. We, we showed up here. I made it here. And at the end of the day, I, I gave everything I had. Like, mm-hmm. like I said, before the Olympics, I came in with the mindset of as long as I'm giving everything I have, like, there's no reason to be upset. Like I did everything I could. And yes, it could, it's frustrating, but I had, a, it led me this far and I can't ignore the fact that I've been blessed with meeting all these people, making new rivals and making it to the first Olympic games. And it was just such an amazing thought to me. I was like, you know what, let's just finish the race. Cause my mom always taught me to like finish what I've started and finish the race and do what you have to do. So I, I one walked in that mindset and realized at the end of the day, I had fun. I had a great time. I had a great time from the moment before, like before the moment I fell, like all before that race, I was having a great time running and meeting people and racing people and feeling their energy. Like, this is the first, I think during this race, this was the first race I didn't take it to the front and I was just competing with a bunch of people next to me. And I can feel the energy of like the whole competition, like everybody's pushing hard. And it was such a cool, like, it was such a cool place to be in. And I just loved every second of it. So I couldn't be upset over me having as much fun as I did. Yeah, totally. No, I think that's a great way to see it uh, and uh, a great attitude to have for sure. Um, yeah. And um, so, yeah, here at uh, Streamline Athletes, um, we're actually a college recruitment platform. So we help uh, high school athletes uh, find their university and um, through a, a free to use uh, recruitment app. And I'm sure there's a lot of uh, high school students that are going to look at that and college athletes as well. Uh, so do you have any tips for like high school students, like looking to pursue track and field in college? Like maybe you can talk about your recruitment experience or like how it, how it ended up playing uh, in your favor, obviously, but what was the yeah. process? Yeah. Um, I would say for anything, especially with kids in high school, I know things are changing, but I think one thing that doesn't change is how important your grades are. And I'd say start your freshman. I know it's hard to like, you know, think about it your freshman year, but if you think about anything, you got to think about how good your grades are because grades will hold you back a lot. And I had to, I had to turn my grades around, but it was still struggling into schools that I wanted to get into. And that, that's just something I learned for me, like grades are super important. So like, Focus, focus on having good grades because good grades will take you way farther than the times will take you. Like there are some people that I know that are super fat, that were super fast in high school, but they couldn't go anywhere that was good because of their grades. So I would say really, really hone in on that. And secondly, for track wise, I think the number one thing is building a relationship with your coach and trusting in that. Because a lot of times people see like their race is not going well, and, you know, they just immediately blame the coach without talking mm-hmm. to them and explaining how they feel. And you'll know, you'll know from that point when you talk to them and explain how you feel, what type of coach you've had. But it's important to trust in your coach because trusting your coach and trusting your ability is going to take you really far into hitting these times that you want. I'm just talking track in general right now, right. <laughs> but um, it's going to take you really far because even if you have more potential, that trust and belief that you can do it and that 90% mental is going to take you faster on the track than you ever actually thought. Um, right. And then in terms of colleges, um, hmm, great advice. I think the biggest thing is reaching out, reaching out, saying your times, trying to do those questionnaires, um, any, anything that will get you close to meeting the coaches or anything like that, I would say do that because building those relationships are, makes everything a lot easier. Building relationships makes everything a lot easier. So I would say just like 
even though the coaches, your times are your best race or something like that or something where you do something crazy. Cause like one thing that coach Watts saw me for, he wasn't really looking for me as an athlete when I transferred from Irvine. One thing that he saw was one race that wasn't fast. I, it was not my fastest time, but one crazy thing that I did was like, I started, this was back when I was at Irvine, I started kicking from the 300 and just didn't care what happened. And oh. hey, just admire that. Like some coaches admire certain ways that you run. So send them like, you know, some type of race where you do something really crazy. Cause you know, they're <laughs> like, oh, we can, we can work with that. That's something, you know? So I feel like those are like important for colleges, just working on your grades, um, reaching out and trying to build a relationship. Re- really, really good advice to give to high school um, athletes. And I think uh, they're definitely going to take it at heart and, uh, and uh, hopefully use these advices to uh, help them go to the college that best fits them. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for um, joining us today, Isaiah. Um, yeah, it's been great talking to you. No problem.